Abhisit Wachachiwa, welcome to In Conversation. Pleasure to be here. On September the 30th, the Thai Constitutional Court is going to rule as to whether Prime Minister Prayut has actually broken the two-term limit on his being in office. What do you think they're going to rule? Well, it's anybody's guess now. Uh, there are, of course, uh, arguments on all sides. Those that believe that uh, we should count uh, his first day as prime minister on the day of the coup back in 2014 will point to the fact that this provision in the constitution was written in in order to um, try to avoid uh, accumulation of power uh, like in other countries where they have term limits. Uh, those that point to the beginning of the constitution as, the, as day one would say that uh, the constitution would not be retroactive uh, in its provision. And those who argue that uh, we should count from the day after the elections in 2019 will say that this provision about the term limit should be tied to how the prime minister is, is selected. Well, what is your view? What do you think is the proper start, so to say, when it should be counted? Because there's quite a big gap. If one takes it from the, the, the coup, it is, well, then he should be stepping down. But if you take it as later, then he still has several more years to go. Sure. Um, well, I should say this. When I first saw this provision, when it was written, um, I thought that if I were to become prime minister, I would certainly not have eight years, but would have the two or so years that I have served as prime minister deducted from my potential term. This is because I think the intention of the writers is to prevent any one person from being in office uh, for too long. And it even writes that uh, the terms do not have to be continuous. So um, on the first reading, that's certainly my understanding. Um, and uh, but of course, you know, there are legal experts who think otherwise. So what you're saying here is, is that really, in order to live up to the spirit, at least, of what was written into the Constitution, he ought to step down. Well, I'm saying that uh, that's how I read the uh, intention and the spirit of the Constitution. But uh, oftentimes here in Thailand, the courts um, take a rather narrow view of how things are written. And there will, of course, be technical legal arguments um, otherwise. Um, but the prime minister certainly has shown no signs of wanting to step down. Um, he clearly intends to carry on. So it's really up to the court. Let's speculate a little or let's say what if they do rule that it is actually time for him to stop, that the two term limit has been hit. Will we enter into a period of chaos? Is there a power vacuum now? There shouldn't be a chaos um, because whatever the ruling uh, on September the 30th, this is all according to the constitution. And my expectation is um, the first thing that would happen would be for the coalition parties to get together. I think they will have to decide uh, whether they want to continue working together. And if they do, they will have to agree on a candidate. And if you talk about speculation, people talk about the possibility of either General Prawit who heads the uh, biggest coalition party, has served clearly as, as a Kun Prayut's deputy all along. Uh, although, of course, the problem is he's not on that list. Um, next to that, it would be Kun Anutin, who is the head of the second biggest party in the coalition at the moment. Um, and I would expect that that's what would happen. And they would, they would try to work something out. If, let's say, it moves the other way, after all, we should remember that the whole challenge was actually brought by the opposition parties. Right. If, let's say, the Constitutional Court says, no, actually, it's quite all right, and the suspension was merely while we were thinking about right. things, but now Prime Minister Prayut can go back to his office and everything will continue as per normal. Would that not suggest that we're going to see protests? Well, I would expect opposition and protests um, to happen. Although I'm not sure um, how big or how active those protests would be. Um, the reason I think being that the opposition also see that we would be heading into an election no later than May anyway. And therefore um, there is a likelihood that they would win that election. 
um, to actually do something that might create instability might not uh, uh, be in their interest either. But I expect that there would be people who will be uh, who were already unhappy with uh, the prime minister and will be very unhappy with the verdict and will um, demonstrate that uh, they are unhappy about it. What about the military's argument, which they always make, and that is that they are the ones that bring stability to Thailand. Uh, the harking back is always to the period, there was a period of a lot of street protests, uh, the red shirts, the yellow shirts, and how much it destabilized uh, the country, as well as particularly Bangkok. The airport was overrun, uh, traffic was completely paralyzed. So, do you think that the military is right when it says, well, we're the only ones who can bring stability? Well, I think um, you have to uh, separate um, the situation at hand and the general picture about longer term stability. I think when the coups were carried out by the military, a lot of people did feel that they did restore order because the country, of course, was mired with protests and counter protests, although many of us, myself included, never believed that that could be a viable long-term solution. And of course, while I think General Prayut was um, elected prime minister on the back of an election results, where a lot of people clearly voted for the Phalang Prachayarat party because they felt that they could continue with this uh, stability or order. Um, it's also true that the conflicts um, the underlying conflicts never went away. And some people would, would argue that we've accumulated um, new issues of conflicts, maybe even to uh, even more sensitive ones now. And the younger generations clearly have uh, demonstrated that they are unhappy with the way things are. And uh, the last two years, of course, we've also had the pandemic. So it's difficult to gauge whether power of that uh, uh, the force of the protests, as well as the measures that were put in using the emergency decree, have suppressed um, a lot of that uh, feeling. But uh, I don't think anybody can seriously argue that you can continue to suppress uh, these kinds of feelings or conflicts forever. I would certainly argue that uh, if Thailand wants longer term stability, it really has to begin this process of correcting uh, these anomalies. But Thai politics is extremely factionalized into the red shirts and the yellow shirts. Well, the politics continues to be polarized, as you say, and there is very little middle ground um, at the moment, or certainly uh, you are finding it tough for any political party or political force to try to expand this uh, middle ground. Uh, but I would argue that you're seeing that all over the world partly because of the way maybe we now take in information and, and you know, form our political opinions and there is less um, dialogue uh, among those who think differently. Uh, so I think this is a challenge for Thailand as well as many countries. And certainly I, my view is that we really should try to pave the way because um, after all, both sides uh, have some valid arguments and both sides also have weaknesses. And I think it's not healthy for uh, this confrontation to continue on the one hand with, with a, a majority of people feeling that perhaps um, their voices are not being uh, heard or because the rules are unfair. While on the other side, they also feel that uh, they have um, legitimate issues about previous elected governments that have abused power. I think as a country, as a society, we should learn from the past, uh, take those lessons and try to forge a better way ahead. 
And for me, I think the, the, the rewriting of the constitution would provide that kind of platform, would be a process where all these views can, can be uh, um, synthesized um, to open up a, a new chapter for Thai politics. But would anything really change with a new constitution? Thailand has had 18 constitutions in 80 years of constitutional monarchy. Right. Well, we, we certainly have no illusions that uh, a new constitution would fix everything. But we have to be realistic about the current path we're on, where um, the constitution continues to be a source of conflict. Um, and that cannot be um, healthy. Uh, when you have the highest law of the land being a point of contention all the time. Uh, the constitution that was uh, passed in a referendum back in 2017 was one where it's contested uh, that it wasn't under a free and fair environment. And many people who voted for it wanted just simply to move ahead so we can go to elections, um, but are now seeing the, the weaknesses or the shortcomings uh, of the rules. So I think um, we have to be realistic. Um, the first step <clears throat> is to open up this, this path. And whether the new constitution, if we get to, to write one, will provide that solution is up to the substance and the process um, by which that constitution is written. And my hope is that uh, in writing this constitution, if we have a, a process where there is enough participation, where there is enough rational discussion and taking a, a, a serious look at what's gone wrong in the past, we should really be able to craft a, a better way for the country as we move ahead. Well, one of the things that's been in the constitution and one of the things that also has been quite divisive is whether or not Thailand really is a constitutional monarchy. In the past, the monarchy was always seen as somehow a stabilizing neutral force. But do you think that's the case now for the future? Well, I am worried that the issue of the monarchy has now become part of the political conflict. And I think it's in the interest of the country that we uh, remove uh, the monarchy from the conflict as quickly as possible. And one way to do that, of course, is to have some safe space where there could be reasonable discussions among people who think differently on, on both sides. What do you mean by safe space? Well, I think, for instance, um, if we did have this opportunity to, to write a new constitution. Some of the provisions related to the monarchy can certainly be discussed. Um, because Some people would say that is sacrilege. Write, no, no, if we write this new constitution, you have to remember that uh, it is clearly stipulated that any rewriting or any amendments, Thailand cannot move away from being a constitutional monarchy, right? So um, that sets a framework and I think that if people are sincere when they talk about reforms of the institution rather than any kind of republicanism, I think there is um, an opportunity and there is a possibility that we can have this discussion in a way that does not stir hatred, in a way that does not uh, in the end resort to the use of um, either violence or the use of the law to silence the other side. Uh, and if we are civil, in our discussions, I see no reason why we cannot come to a, an agreeable solution. What about some political analysts who argue that many Thais may not want democracy, not at least uh, the way that's understood in, in perhaps what you'd say the Western part of the world, that what they want is, some say, but that they are perhaps quite content to have some form of autocracy? Well, the one thing is, if we are serious about rewriting the constitution, we would have a referendum in the first place. And uh, if the referendum is held in a free and fair environment, isn't that the best way to uh, actually uh, measure the, the feelings of the people?
recent poll has indicated that more than 60% of Thais would like to have an election soon. Do you think we're going to have an election soon? Well, we would only have an election if the, the government decides to call one. And I don't see any reason why they would want early elections, uh, especially if, for instance, there is an unfavorable ruling uh, on general period. Um, I think the, the government side would be uh, ill-prepared to head into elections quickly. Um, and, and I think what the poll shows clearly is that um, there is a demand for change. And that's why I'm saying that the opposition, I think, feel that they can wait until the next elections um, to affect that change. Um, I think the, the bigger challenge, far, far bigger challenge on the government side is that th 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 than the 30th of September ruling is how they can recover some of their support as they head into the elections. And in fact, uh, if, if you think a ruling in favor of the prime minister, but if his term should, should start from 2017, that also puts him and the government parties in a very awkward position in terms of uh, putting him up as a candidate in the, in the next elections. One of the things we've seen recently that some people say is a kind of quasi barometer for what would happen in a coming election was the Bangkok governor. That's a very influential post. It's a very prominent post. The person who won that was an independent professor. Is that something that we're going to see more of in the future? I think certainly it was clear that um, government party candidates or candidates seen to be close to the government were never going to win. Um, but whether we can extrapolate from the results uh, is, uh, I think, a little tricky. Uh, I have to point out that in almost all previous gubernatorial um, elections, since we've had them, um, the Bangkok people have always voted outside the government and often they voted for outsiders. And I think one of the things also is that because you can run as an independent, uh, if you can convince the voters that you are independent, um, that can then transcend the, the polarization that exists. Unfortunately, in general elections, you cannot run as an independent. You have to have a party. And at the moment, I think most parties are still being pigeonholed by the electorate as being as belonging to one side or the other, including all the new parties that are being set up. What do you think is going to happen, though, in an election? Um, I've seen that you say that it's possible that a toxin faction might come back. Yeah, I think if, if you have to make um, a, a prediction now, I think everyone would say that the, the opposition would win. The details though, will matter because uh, Will Pua Thai on its own manage to get an absolute majority? If so, then I think there's no question about uh, how gov the government would be formed. But if they are short of a majority, um, then you know all sorts of things could happen in terms of negotiations, especially if the Senate continues to have power. Um, and, and I think again, I think that could be a potential source of instability. Do you think there's a kind of tribalism that has that's now become really deep rooted in in Thai politics and also Thai civil society? Well, I see that in not just in Thai politics, but uh, many countries around the world, and I think that's partly due to the problem, of course, that the technology has ironically uh, brought us here, because despite the fact that we have um, access to all kinds of information that we've never had before in the history of mankind, we tend to be trapped in uh, just in our echo chambers and uh, just looking at things, listening to things that simply reinforce our beliefs. We have less patience and tolerance uh, when we see people who think differently. Um, and I think that needs to be um, tackled. Um, it's the job of not just uh, the government, but also um, the media, uh, also even the, the, the tech companies uh, in, in, in handling the algorithms as well. But I mean, that's a much bigger issue and I think that covers a lot of countries. If there was one thing that you would say to your fellow Thais who are tired of all of this that's going on in the politics and would like to have some level of stability and democracy at the same time, what would you say to them? 
well, I would, I would ask them to support this process whereby we can all come together and begin to write a new book or a new chapter for Thai politics. Um, so, well, yes, they can go ahead and support their um, political parties in the next election, but let's somehow force all the political parties to come to terms with the fact that it is now time for all of us to get together, find some middle ground um, and still compete uh, in a healthy election and a healthy democracy. But people don't want to give up power easily, do they? No, um, I, I recognize that. And, th and that's why I think um, it's important uh, as elections come up, it is an opportunity for people to speak up and to tell the political parties what they really need. Abhisit Mochachiwa, thank you very much for being on In Conversation. It's a pleasure. Thank you.